Welcome back everyone. Today we are out for a ride on the Trek Merlin 6. This is the current generation, not the all new one, but we're going to talk about the changes that have happened to the new one and how it will affect the bike. So the Merlin 6 has seen a small price decrease in a way by allowing it to have uh, a parts improvement. With all the new Merlins, the head tube sits a little bit more slacker. The head tube is going to be able to let you downhill and honestly just trail ride way better. It's going to get better stability and more confidence when you get in that kind of more technical or downhill situation. To balance off that slacker head tube angle, they've also done a classic mountain bike move where that seep tube angle is now steeper. So it gets you a little bit more on top of the power and on top of the pedal stroke so you're going to really be able to put out power while climbing. It does have now all of them a very short stem on it. Now that isn't too different than the current model. They didn't really have a huge change, um, but with a bit longer reach in the frame, it kind of puts you right over the top of the wheel. So you're a little more agile, a little more twitchy feeling while actually riding off road. So those are three main points which have changed with all the models. Another thing that changed is that through skew on the back wheel, and that is now going to, I, honestly, it's not the biggest improvement in any which way. It's just a better system for lining up the back wheel. If you're new to bikes, or honestly, even higher end bikes have this through axle system. So you can't allow the rear wheel to be out of a line in any which way. If you've taken it off, it will always line right back up. So it's just a better thing for making sure that transporting your bike, whatever, you take the wheel off. When you put it back on, it's going to be lined up perfectly. They've added a few additional features, like the chain stays has now a full wrap on it. So it's just going to hold up better. The current Marlin has a very small piece of rubber stuck to it, which over time does peel off and fall off. And it doesn't really protect if you really trail ride. It is made for kind of the around town stuff and lighter stuff like I'm doing now. Once you get into the actual off-road side of things, well, then it's kind of useless in a way. Obviously, it helps better than nothing to protect your paint, but it's not the best. As well, this one goes to stock a 2.4 inch wide tire. So you're able to just have better clearance you'll be able to go to a more aggressive tire if you wanted something more like a maxis minion which is the most popular tire on the market right now other things they've changed on the frame is the frame is now actually designed for internal routing for a drop post although this doesn't come with a drop post it was one of the downsides with the old one where you actually didn't even get the option to use one without it being external, which works, but just does not look as clean anywhere near as clean anyway. So those are the main overall points, which all of them change. Next, the bike itself doesn't change that much. So spec wise, apart from the tire, you still have an alpha aluminum frame. So it's lightweight, very, very lightweight. You still get all the rack mounts to a kickstand mount. All they've done is change that rear axle to become, instead of like a dropout standard, it is now what they call the through skew. You have changed the frame to have that internal routing, like I said, but Suspension wise, it is still an SR Centaur XCT30, still a coil spring, has a lockout to it, so it does stiffen it up when you need, and 100 mils of travel. And the front, obviously, being a fork, still has the dropouts. It's not like a through skew on the front wheel as well. It's not that big of a deal, but it's something worth noting. Brake wise, they are or should be shipping with, so you're getting a Tektro. 275 it's a hydraulic disc brake it's going to work really well nice thing is it comes with 160 mil rotor but it does allow up to 180 mil rotors on it so you can upgrade it to be a lot more downhill aggressive bite to it which is a nice feature i never even looked to see what the old model was but this one is kind of nice still that same shimano dior 10 speed works really well shifts really well does come with a pro wheel front crank and chain ring which with the front single speed chain rings i don't see a huge difference like you could get the shimano one and 
Theoretically, it might be more durable, I guess, but the front chain rings definitely hold up a lot better than they used to. The next biggest change that comes along is the Marlin 6 now comes with a Bontrager Covey double walled tubeless ready rip. This is a big upgrade. It came with a connection previously. Honestly, great little rim. You were just limited because you couldn't go tubeless with it or you'd have to do something a little more sketchy. The tires it comes with are the new Bontrager XT3 comp, so they are not tubeless a bowl. You would have to get new tires, but it's a nice transitional tire. You can kind of trail ride with it, a little more aggressive than the kind of XRs, but not crazily aggressive in any which way. It's not like a Maxxis Minion, but it is um, it is a little more aggressive on the outer edges and still a nice hard pack on the front. Overall, there's not a huge amount of changes. They've really tweaked the frame as the key feature here, added a new pair of rims, and that's about it. Everything else will work as good as the last one. The only benefit of this one is it's going to work noticeably better off-road. I don't have any doubt in my mind, even without riding one, a few tweaks to the front end, seat adjustments, and putting on bigger tire clearances and things will make it go so much better. The through skew, I'm 50-50 whether you'll even notice. I don't think there's going to be any extra stiffness or control out of it. In theory, you might get a small amount. It is definitely a nicety to ha always have your gears aligned perfectly if you're ever taking your rear wheel off. I know a lot of people do avoid that though, so we'll see if it holds up or if they just kind of dip that away in a few years. To me, I'd be not surprised if it disappeared. Handlebar wise, they did not change either. So these are still 750 mil wide bars, which is a nice comfy wide bar. It's not anything crazy. It's definitely more in the, you know, amateur or beginner width. They could have thrown on something like a 780 or 800 and had the option to cut down. That would have added this huge trail bike look to it when you pull it off the the floor and actually look at it it just has that big wide bars big tires but overall i'm very happy with this new colors all look really really good a matte dennis to black the hex blue to deep dark blue similar to like the fuel x8 of previous years blue sage and then followed up with that matte olive gray which was kind of taken off that roscoe 6 with the changes they've made, the price hasn't changed, so it's kind of stayed the same, whereas the new or old ones, the new Generation 2 ones are on sale, whereas Generation 3 are not on sale, but with noticeable upgrades and improvements. So I definitely think this is well worth the upgrade. If you have a Marlin 6 and you're looking for an improvement, it's surprising that you'll be able to go out and buy a new Marlin 6 so quickly and actually see noticeable off-road improvements. Around town, I don't think you'll notice any difference. I don't think it'll be less comfy. I don't think you'll see any of those features. If you were using it more as a commuter, maybe. If you like long distance high speed commuting, obviously being that it comes with a little more aggressive tire, geometry is a little more aggressive, it could potentially not be as comfortable. But I don't think for the average user you'd even notice a difference, except it will be more confident downhills. What do you guys think? Is this something good to have such a minor change in things and no price increase? Has it became more valuable? I think so. I think really they've balanced out where the prices went up and up and up and nothing changed. Adding these wheels alone makes it way better. Those are an expensive set of wheels in relativity to the bike. The internal dropper post will make all of those look extremely clean. And the trail set geometry, which they're now aiming for, still gonna be comfy to ride around like I am now just on a path. But when you shortcut now through a trail or something like that, it's just gonna perform so, so good. Highly recommend checking it out. Highly recommend letting me know in the comments below if it is worth the change. I don't see any reason why someone on a Marlin 5 or 6 of previous generations or anything similar to those wouldn't see a huge upgrade in riding a new modern day Marlin Gen 6, Gen 3 Marlin 6. And it'll be nice when they just get rid of the generation system probably next year because I don't believe they'll keep it forever.
All right. To continue this ride, keep watching. We'll go through all the other Marlins, and I'll just break it up into kind of three separate videos. Obviously, the Marlin 5 is the exact same, so we won't go over that one. Kind of doing what they did with the Roscoe 6, leaving it for a few years, and we'll see if they replace it or what they do to change that or bring down the price a little bit more. will be very interesting. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, and otherwise, thanks for watching, and good luck, guys. We'll see you in the next video.